you have the notes for unit seven, day three, and uh, they start on page nine of your packet. Um, last class, we talked about drawing slope fields and um, also picking a slope field or picking a differenti differential equation um, that matched the slope field. And then we ended the uh, discussion with um, drawing some, or sketching, I should say, sketching some uh, possible solution curves. And we're going to kind of continue that discussion um, today. And so um, we're going to, this is called reasoning using slope fields. And our essential question is, how do you tell what general function, what general functions slope field represent? So that's kind of the general function is kind of what we were sketching in that last, uh, in that last video. So a um, couple of comments here. Uh, solutions to slope fields are functions that can be sketched right over the slope field, right? So that we call that a solution. Um, and and uh, and so what we if you remember to the last example from the from the previous day's notes, um, we call those solution curves. Then and some and it depends upon what point they go through, and they can have different shapes based on um, whether or not we have asymptotes uh, in that slope field. Um, we're going to discuss two categories of solutions in this unit, um, one called a general solution and the other called a particular solution. Um, we'll go more into more detail about the differences between these two types of solutions uh, a little later in the unit, but the, uh, there are two, uh, two, those are the two categories that this, the solutions fall into. Um, okay, so let's look at this first example, sketching and selecting a solution. So. This is this is distinctly different than what we were doing in the last lecture. In the last in the last lecture, we were selecting a differential equation. So we were looking at a an expression for the differential equation, knowing that it was the slope, and matching it up with the uh, with what with, with the slopes that we saw on the, on the slope field. In this in this situation, what we're doing is we're looking at a slope field and we're saying let's sketch a possible solution, and then look at that solution and match it up with a function. Okay, so once we sketch the solution, we kind of stop looking at the slope field. That's what this is about. Okay, so it says the slope field uh, for certain differential equation is shown right here, not above, but right here. Um, which of the following could be a solution? So which of the following could be a solution function um, to, the, to this differential equation? Remember, this is the slope field is a representation of the differential equation. With the initial condition, y of zero equals one. So in other words, what it's saying is sketch a solution curve, curve through y of, equal equals, y of 0 equals 1. So that's this point right here, right? When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. And we're going to sketch a solution curve. So the first thing I notice about this slope field is that along the y-axis, I have zero slopes. So we know that we have like a max here because we need some sort of function that has a, a zero, a tangent line of uh, that has a slope of zero right here. And then the other thing I noticed is that along the x-axis, I have zero slope. So I must have a horizontal asymptote down here. So I'm gonna just draw a smooth curve that follows the slope lines. So let me back that up and draw that again. Notice how I'm drawing this. I'm not drawing it from left to right. I'm starting at this initial condition, okay? You know, so we call this an initial condition, the point that it goes through. We call that an initial condition. So I'm starting here and I'm drawing to the right, then drawing to the left. And that's, that's the easiest way to get the smoothest curve. So I'm drawing to the right, trying to follow those slope lines, sort of kind of parallel to those as many as, as I can get and keep it smooth. And then likewise, to the left. And as I'm drawing, I'm making the observation of the slope field that it is symmetrical about the y-axis. So my right should look like my left, okay? And that's part of the grading criteria that we look for as graders. We look to make sure that you're going through the right point, And then we make sure to look, make sure you're making the attempt to be parallel to as many of those slope field lines as you can. And then when, if you see a pattern in the slope field that is symmetrical, we're looking for symmetry in your sketch. So that's how we grade those things. All right, so um, like I said, this was different than the last class because the last class we were comparing the slopes with the differential equation. This question is saying, look at this solution curve and which one of these equations 
matches this function. So at this point, we're going to stop looking at the slope field. So if you remember back in the last unit, um, on the back side of your schedule, on page two uh, of your packet, I gave you a printout of a bunch of functions. I think there was one, two, three, four, two, three, four. It was like 20 different functions. And I said, you, sh you should know those shapes. Okay, it had a lot, I had a, like a line with none, with a slope that wasn't one. It had some horizontal lines, vertical lines, absolute value. I'm just looking at it because it's on the wall right now, right? It had some parabolas, both up and down and, and sideways. It had square roots. Um, it had trig, it had circles, it had natural logs, all that stuff. Know those shapes. This is where it comes into handy. Okay, so this should be actually a really quick problem. I see this shape. And with that, um, with that uh, handout I gave you on page two of your unit, it was unit five notes. Um, I know cosine looks, I, I, we gotta know these shapes. And so you're gonna pull out that sheet. And if you don't have it, I'll help you find it. Um, but I know cosine looks like this. Well, what we sketched doesn't look like this. So we can eliminate cosine. 1 minus x squared. Well, I'm not quite sure what that looks like, but I know x squared looks like this. That's my, this is minus x squared, right? This is just an intercept. So that just means the top of this is up at 0, 1. Well, that doesn't look like this. The curvature is all wrong. I mean, it's got a max in the right spot. That's cool. But you, parabolas do they have, they have this curvature, and this obviously has a point of inflection that goes from concave down to concave up. So not the right curvature. E to the x, we know e to the x looks like this, right? And it has an intercept of one, so it would look like this. Cross the slope field, well, that's not matching. Square root of x looks like this, right? It would start, um, this in, in this case, uh, it would start at, uh, when x is equal to one, y would be equal to zero, it would start here, and it would go like this. Well, that's not matching up. So it's gotta be this one. Even though you don't really know what this one looks like, you've eliminated everything else. So it's, it's definitely got to be this one. So let's check this out. When x equals 0, y equals 1. Well, that hits that point. That works. When y equals 1, oh, when x equals 0, y equals 1. Sorry. When x increases, in other words, as this, get bigger, as this gets bigger, then this whole fraction decreases. Well, that, that works too. As x increases, as we go from 1 to 2 to 3, my y values are getting close to 0. Now, let's look at some end behavior, right? As x goes to infinity, right? We're looking at end behavior now. We're trying to find horizontal asymptotes. As x goes to infinity, so continuing this red curve all the way up to infinity, y goes to 0. And that is, that is lining up with, um, with the shape that, that, that we have sketched here. And um, we see that as we get to bigger and bigger x's, or even smaller and smaller x's, right? Bigger negatives, as I call them, um, that would, this would still be positive. So either way, we're going to go, we're going to approach y equals zero, um, and we're going to approach it from the positive. So this is always going to be positive. So we know it has to be. Um, and I didn't have to go into too much, all of this explanation since we had ruled out everything else, but. Um, this is how you rationalize something that you don't really know what it looks like. You look at specific points, then you look at general trends, like I look at specific point x equals zero. Then we look at general trends, what happens when x increases, what happens to y, is it inverse, is it direct? And then I look at any behavior. And that's how we can kind of get a feel for something we don't know what, if we don't know what it looks like. Okay, so um, try this one on your own. Stop the video. So sketching and selecting a solution to a differential equation, it's the same as the previous example. We're going to sketch a solution curve through zero, zero. It's right here. Okay. So um, get your get your point set up. Look for your horizontal and vertical asymptotes. I see a vertical asymptote on this one, just to give you a hint. Okay. So go ahead and try this on your own and start the video when you uh, to check your work. All right. If you're turning back in, I'm assuming that you've uh, you've tried this problem and are just checking your work. So let's talk about that vertical asymptote. So we know that we have a vertical asymptote right here. Um, we can see that on either side of them, on either side, we have super, super vertical lines. So uh, we know we have a vertical asymptote at negative one. So just scanning these things, um, a 
a vertical asymptote at negative one would be a characteristic of B, C, and D. So we know we can eliminate A right away. Um, so vertical asymptotes means we have undefined slope, right? Undefined slope means we have something, we have zero in the denominator, right? That's what that means. So that's how I can put those out so quick. All right. Um, so we know we're here and not there. Okay, when x equals zero, the slope is equal to zero. So, so look at, we have zero slope here, right? So we have, if we look at this, we've got negative slope on the left of that, of the axis and positive slope on the right. So we know we have something that kind of swoops like this if we're up here. Okay, it just depends upon which point we're going to go through, right? We've got something that kind of swoops down, gets flat at the axis and comes back up. So now the the question is, is, well, where do we have to draw this general shape? We have to specifically go through the origin right here. Um, okay, so looking at options then, we can eliminate D because um, we, we know that the tangent is asymptotic right here at pi over two. Um, and because the tangent of pi over two is undefined and we don't have another asymptote there. So we know we can eliminate tangent. Um, and we know we can eliminate this because we would have another asymptote at positive one. We have another vertical asymptote right here because positive one makes this zero and negative one makes this zero. And we don't see another asymptote at one. So we can eliminate this. So the answer's got to be C. Um, it, it's because it's the only one still available. And so when we look at this, um, <clears throat> We see an x squared in the top, so that's kind of that's kind of parabolic, and this this looks kind of parabolic. It's just not symmetrical because we have this denominator present. So we know it's c, and so to sketch this, and I, I'm not quite sure why the sketch didn't come up right away, but um, again, I'm just going to follow those um, those the slope field as best as I can, make sure I'm kind of staying parallel to the slope field lines, and then so we have this asymptote on the left, so it kind of looks parabolic. Um, and I could have any initial condition. If I wanted to have the initial condition up at two, it would just look like this, it would just look a little smaller. Or I could have it down here at negative two and a half, and it would just look like that. You know, that those are just all, all offsets. That's what this initial condition is. Um, so the answer to this one is C. Um, looking at this one, go ahead and try this one also, sketching and describing the characteristics. So now we're talking about concavity. So we definitely want to, um, we, and it looks like we have a couple of different points to sketch curves through. So we definitely want to get the this, this sketches accurate and so that we can talk about the concavity. So the question here is, uh, which of the following statements about f of x is false? Okay, so we're looking for the false statement. So let's take a look at this um, initial condition, f of one equals negative one. So that x equals one, y equals negative one, that's right here, right? x equals one, y equals negative one right here. And we are gonna graph that slope field. So I'm gonna, as best I can, follow those slope field lines. Okay, so is that concave down? On the interval from zero to two, so zero to two, is this concave down? Yep, that's concave down, right? That looks like it spills water, that looks like a frown, however you wanna think about that. So that looks like it's a true statement. So that is not the right answer because we're looking for false statements. Um, let's look at the next point, negative one comma one. So this is x equals negative one, y equals one. So x equals negative one, y equals one. x equals negative one, y equals one. We're up here in the second quadrant. Let's go ahead and get that sketch. You notice we have some rotational symmetry here. Um, so just to kind of throw that out there, there must be an odd function. We talk about even odd functions, right? When we have rotational symmetry, we, have, we talk about having an odd function. Um, okay, so from negative one to zero, so negative one to zero. So in this region on the right-hand side of this shape, of the green shape, is it concave up? And the answer is, yep, it looks like it would hold water. It looks like a smile. So that also appears to be a true statement. Uh, let's take a look at C, zero, zero. So we're talking about right here at the origin. And um, we're talking about negative one to one. So we're talking about kind of in the middle of the graph here. All right, so if I graph this, we notice that our slope lines are pretty horizontal as we get around the origin here. So we must have some sort of <clears throat> zero tangent line. But if I go to the right, it curves down. And if I go to the left, it curves up. 
So we have something that looks like that if we draw the solution through zero, zero. Notice that we can get so much, we can get just totally different looks depending on, just, just by changing the point I want you to draw or sketch the uh, solution curve through, we get totally different looks. And that, that kind of goes along with my comment about meteorology, a uh, very cool profession. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, that also depends upon, um, you know, when we look at slope fields, when we look at uh, um, wind patterns and, and low pressure and high pressure systems, uh, depending upon where you are in that weather model, um, you know, you, you'll experience different wind speeds, different wind directions, um, and, uh, and those wind speeds are connected to pressure. So the, the higher the pressure, the higher the wind speed. So, um, so, you know, you can picture yourself, maybe this is a map of Wisconsin and maybe you're up here in Rhinelander or maybe you're down here in, in Fond du Lac or over here in Waukesha, you know, you can experience different things. Anyway, back to the question. Okay, so we're looking at the interval, we're looking at the middle. It says, and this, the, this statement saying is, well, if I draw through zero, zero, and I look in the interval from negative one to one, I should see something that's concave up. And they don't. It's concave up on the left, but it's concave down on the right. So this is false. So that's gotta be the answer to the question because we're looking for false statements. But let's just check D just in case. So we're, again, we're going through zero, zero. And it says the graph of the particular solution satisfies zero, zero. So we're still looking at the orange curve. And, um, it says, is, could that be a possible point of inflection right there at x equals zero? Well, we know points of inflections change concavity and we're concave up on the left and we're concave down on the right and that is a concavity change. So this is also appearing to be a true statement. So this answer is definitely C. That's the false statement that we're looking for. Um, okay, so the other thing we can do then is, and this kind of, we kind of did a question like this, right? Describe the points in the XY plane for which um, a certain characteristic exists. So in this situation, for example, four, we have this differential equation, uh, two minus Y over X. And we want to describe all the points in the XY plane for which dy dx equals one. But notice we don't have a slope field in this case, right? In the previous, the previous class, I think we had the, the logistic equation and we, uh, we were looking for positive slope, but we have slope field to look at. This we don't. So how do we describe this when we don't have a slope field? Well, we have a differential equation, and which is nothing more than a slope equation. We have a slope value. We're gonna set them equal to each other and we're gonna solve. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply each side by X and I'm gonna solve for Y. So add Y to both sides, subtract X from both sides. We get Y equals to two minus X. So if I am on this line, on my slope field, I'm going to have a slope of one. So that's what we basically have to say. The points in the xy plane that are on the line y equals two minus x will have a slope of one. So I've described all the points. They have to lie on this line. They're in the xy plane and they have a specific slope. So that would be my description for, for that condition. Let's take a look at example five. Similar question, right? Here's my, here's my differential equation. I don't have a slope field, so I can't look at it. Describe all the points in the xy plane for which the, the uh, derivative of the slope is negative one. So go ahead and stop the video and try this one on your own. Okay, if you're tuning back in, I'm assuming you're tuning in to check your work. So just like above, we're going to take our differential equation, set it equal to the slope of negative one, we'll cross multiply uh, and solve for y. So I'm going to move y to the left, I'm going to move everything to the right. I could also um, just multiply through by a negative one if you wanted to do that. So um, we get y equals negative x minus one. So similar statement as above, the points in the xy plane that are on the line y equals negative x minus one will all have a slope of, it's a bad typo, we'll all have a slope of negative one. Let me change that. We'll all have a slope of negative one. There we go. Let me get the animation back to that. Points. There we go. Um, so we'll all have a slope of negative one. So there's my description of the condition that meets this requirement. All right. So when we uh, get into the question, we'll talk about the takeaways and work on the topic questions for day three.